I've called this presentation Faith in Kosovo. It will talk about various beliefs, but its focus will be on evangelical Christianity. And we're going to start with the period prior to 1979. At that time, the Albanian Kosovars were Roman Catholic. And there you see their church on the left. And on the right, you see me shaking hands with the Roman Catholic priest at the end of a meeting where one of my books was launched at a hotel in Pristina. But with the coming of Islam under the Ottoman Empire, most of them turned to Islam. And so today the Albanians of Kosovo are 96% Muslim and the Albanians make up 95% of the population of that independent republic. So what do these Albanian Muslims think of Christianity? Well, the Serbs acquired the area and incorporated it into Serbia, and they were Eastern Orthodox. And for the Albanians, therefore, Christianity means orthodoxy. And orthodoxy means cultural domination. There is a large church which they built fairly close to the centre of the capital city, which is Pristina. From the 1890s, Methodism spread from Thessalonica and from Skopje up into Kosovo. You will see that the arrow is doubled, and that is because they went to Pristina and established a church there, and they also went and held meetings in Mitrovica. But Methodism went into decline after the Second World War. There is an artist's impression of the church. It has been demolished, and I've not been able to get an image of the actual building. There was a Baptist church which was started in 1965 in Pei by a man called Simor Alevich, but it held its meetings in the Serbian language. Nonetheless, Simo did a lot of evangelism amongst the Albanian population. But there was no other Protestant church inside Kosovo, which was meeting in the Albanian language. A man called Anton Krasnici was converted to the evangelical faith and was baptised in 1980 and went to Bible College. There you see an image of him. And he and his brother, who was also converted, joined in fellowship with the last Methodist, a woman called Vera Gapic. Through that fellowship of three people, a new church was born and Anton became the pastor in 1988. That is the building which they acquired in Pristina. And here you see Anton on the left with his mother and his wife and children outside the church. And on the right you see me and another person visiting them. We wanted to encourage them to know that we were interested, they were loved, prayed for in the West and not forgotten. In 1989, the Albanian Evangelical Mission acquired its first missionary, and his name is Mike Brown. He was from a Baptist church in Swansea, and he went to serve alongside that church in Kosovo, largely in preparation for when Albania itself would open up, but also, of course, to work alongside the church and do what good he could there in Pristina and elsewhere in Kosovo. He and other missionaries, you can see his name underlined, were accused in this book called Kill Your Neighbour of being covert members of the CIA, working as spies for that organisation. Life was not easy for the missionaries, whether it was Mike Brown of the Albanian Evangelical Mission or whether it was other missionaries from other missions or who had gone independently. A rally held here with a million Serbs attending 
may be regarded as the lighting of the fuse for the war which broke out between Albanians and Serbs some years later. Slobodan Milosevic preached an inflammatory nationalist Serbian message, stirring them up to say Kosovo must always be part of Serbia. And then in 1991, Albania opened again to the gospel after the fall of communism. There you see a photograph of Girokasta. And the church in Kosovo became isolated as most of the missionaries left Kosovo and went into Albania. Nonetheless, evangelism continued. A second church began in 1993, pastored by Basim Kreziu. That church is, not was, that church is in Prizren, which is known also as Little Istanbul, and has 32 mosques. In 1994, a third church was formed, and that was led, and still is led, by Femi Sakoli, the man on the left, his father, Azem Sakoli, was the imam in that mosque in Krilev. And they had a series of rented buildings in Pristina, of which that is one. So let's look now at the war which broke out in 1998. There you see the destruction that was wrought to people's homes by the Serbs, that's the village of Majunai. That's Bushtritz. That's a farmhouse in Suarek. And there, because the Serbs were aiming to cleanse Kosovo of Islam, here you see the cross daubed on a building with the destruction behind it and the letters which look like CCCC and that stands for only unity will save Serbia. And so refugees flooded into Albania across the border. Here you see a refugee tent city outside Korcha in Albania. And here in Girokasta you see two of the refugees whom the missionaries looked after. And here, very sadly, you see photographs of people who had simply disappeared. No one knew what had happened to them. Photographs of them up on a fence in the capital city, Pristina. So what happened after the war? Well, a number of things have happened, and the ministry is expanding far more than I can tell you now. And church planting has gone on in a number of places. There is the lovely new church, which the church in Pristina, led by Femi Sakoli, has. And there you see a photograph on the right showing something of their literature ministry. And there you see a photograph of that sprawling capital city. Jilan is the fifth largest city in the Republic, and the word Rinjalia means resurrection. That is where church planting meetings were held. And there you see some of the people involved standing outside and some of them inside. And outside, a literature store in the street. Now, this is a Muslim country, but there is this freedom. Here you see one of the leading lights of the work in Jilan, Naim Blatza reputed to be pillars, as it says in Galatians chapter 2. Evangelism was done by the hiring of a restaurant in 2006 and 7 and 8. A hundred people came, more than a hundred, and there were lectures on the history of Kosovo and Albania with, with the intention of talking about the place of evangelical Christianity and its meaning and answering some of the questions which the Muslims had asked. And you can see that quite a number of people came. The restaurant was hired and a meal was put on. 
the people who were invited were the intelligentsia, journalists, school teachers, that kind of person. But there began to be increased opposition from the Muslims, the radical ones, not liking the growing evangelical community. Here you see in 2008 at Easter, a Christian gathering in the open air proclaiming the resurrection of Christ. And people are interested in their history. Remember, it's a new country, only gained independence in 2008. And this is a meeting in the Grand Hotel in Pristina, November 2010. Look at all the people who turned up to hear about Christianity, evangelical Christianity, in their small country and indeed amongst Albanians more widely. And here you see a similar meeting a year later in 2011. And you will see from that picture of me speaking that it even got onto the radio and television. That's the government building in the capital city, Pristina. I would like you to pray that there will be peace in that land. The war was appalling, brutal, ruthless. Pray for peace and pray that religious liberty will continue. There's another organisation recently formed called the Institute for Albanian and Protestant Studies, which is doing a very good work showing the rootedness of the Protestant movement amongst Albanians going right back to the 1820s and how it has been accepted by Albanians and promulgated by Albanians. There you see some people involved in the Institute for Albanian and Protestant Studies. It's led by a man called David Hosefluk, who's a missionary in Albania. Now, if you'd like more information, you can find out what's happening today from the Albanian Evangelical Mission, from the Institute for Albanian and Protestant Studies, instituti.org. Please notice the I on the end of Instituti. If you've got an autocorrect on your computer, it will change it to an E, and then you'll have to go back and correct their so-called correction. You can also follow the doings of Messiah Evangelical Church on their very informative Facebook page.